Hello guys, welcome to the Steve Episodes. So, um, in this episode, actually, um, I'll continue the series, the, the series video which I supposed to uh, create, which is um, System Admin Course. So, the first video I made uh, for uh, what is called like the, with the syllabus and which is called the orientation and the second video actually is not second actually I can call it first because I'm covering the syllabus for system administrator uh, system administrator and BM administrator course so system administrator and BM administrator course the first chapter I just finished and uploaded uh, so you can see on my YouTube channel is uh, introduction to system administration uh, which is number one video and then today i'm gonna record another video which is um chapter two introduction to virtualization so what is the virtualization we're gonna learn in this video what is the virtualization we're gonna learn in this video and i'll explain why we need it and what um equipment or what um devices what kind of devices we need who provide those devices and who provide those software what do we need actually to have a, a virtual environment those things all those questions we're going to discuss in this uh, chapter so let's get started um so i just shared my screen and i believe you are able to see it. All right. So introduction to virtualization. So virtual virtualization technology, virtualization types and difference, share storage, virtualization hardware storage. All those topics I'm gonna discuss in this uh, chapter. Introduction to virtual technology. What is the virtualization? So now first thing is we have to have a clear understanding. What is the virtualization, right? What is the virtualization? What what does it mean? What do you understand with this word virtualization? So virtualization, at least you can realize something that is virtual, it's not actual, right? Virtual means what? It's not actual, it's a virtual, it's look like actual. That's the virtual, right? So virtualization is a process of creation uh, creating a uh, creating a software based or virtual representation of something such as virtual application server storage or network that means is it's a software based through the software you can create a virtual environment like as a virtual server virtual laptop virtual desktop virtual everything right virtual application and also you can do virtualize what you can do with the virtualization so you can virtual uh, virtualize application. You can do virtualized server, st virtual storage, virtual network, right? And all virtual things, how you get it? Like storage means you should have some space. How are you gonna get the space? Virtual server, that means you, you should have some, virtually you should have some CPU memory, right? But how are you gonna get it? So you're gonna get it from your physical resource. That means from your physical equipment or hardware or server, you are sharing resource when you have a virtual environment. That means what? So virtual environment, like share the resource from your physical environment. So anyway, somewhere, somehow, somebody still involved with the physical. Nowadays we said, okay, uh, I have a virtual machine. I'm using Amazon Cloud, right? AWS Cloud. I have a virtual machine. I'm using from, um, I'm a, I have a virtual server. I'm using from Azure Cloud. So that means I am the user. I am the client. I get it through online, right? From Amazon Cloud or maybe Amazon AWS Cloud or maybe Azure Cloud or maybe Google Cloud, right? But in Google Cloud, how they have that virtual machine? How they provide you the virtual machine? How Amazon AWS provide you the virtual machine? How Azure Cloud provide you the virtual machine? That means they have infrastructure for virtualization, right? 
So somewhere on their data center, they have infrastructure. Somebody is managing some physical infrastructure. On top of that, they allow you to create or use their virtual infrastructure. That means if you want to build a virtual infrastructure, you must have to have some physical server. And as a system admin or system engineer, or a VMware admin or VMware individual or a virtualization engineer, it's your duty to manage it. It's your duty to configure it. Okay, so we're gonna see, and we, uh, we're gonna see some example here. So for example, this is a physical server, right? This is a physical laptop, right? This is a, okay, so I, I'm gonna show you some example why you need the virtualization. So I'm going to show you some, okay. For example, this is a server, right? So this is a server, uh, it's a, uh, uh, say application server. Application server one. I don't know what kind of server is one or, so it's a physical server. I'm, I just I just know it's a physical server. Okay. I just know it's a physical server. Just give me one second. So think about, I have one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So, okay. So let's, let's have, Just give one second because I just want to give you a solid example why actually you need a virtualization. So for understanding, just for a good understanding, I'm just drawing this. Give me just a second, few seconds, and hopefully it will be done within short time. So just it's the number two, you know, this number three. This is number four. This one is number five. This number six, okay, six, and this one is number seven. This is number eight, number nine, and this is number ten. Okay, okay, let's do one more thing. So do it some little bit more closer, okay. Let's make it more close, more close, more. And more, think about all those are server. All those are server. What kind of server? Server, server. Think about it's a Dell server. What is Dell server? Dell PowerEdge. Rex server, Dell PowerEdge, Rex server. Oh, sorry. Okay, so Dell server. So images, if you go to the image, you will see your Dell. Oh my goodness. The PowerEdge are seven modules, something like this. Anyway, any any version, this kind of server, it's like server. Think about think about this is the server here. So think about this is a, a company, XYZ company, and they have a 200 server, 200 applications they have. Just think about, so it's an application server. This is a physical server, right? Physical server, it has on, on the physical hardware, it has operating system. How actually it's happened, right? So if you can, there's a three layer. On the physical machine, it has a how many layer? Three layer, right? Three layer. This is a physical physical server, right? And then on top of that, there's another one. Think about this one is a different color.
This is a operating system. Maybe this one is Windows Server 2016 operating system. What operating system? Say Windows Server 2016 or 2019, whatever, right? Whatever, any operating system. So this is the hardware, this is the operating system. And then on top of that, there is a, maybe, what? There is a application. So this is a physical hardware. This is your operating system on top of that. So on top of the hardware, you install operating system. And any kind of OC, it can be Windows, it can be Linux, it can be Unix. And then on top of that, your operating system, you can install your application, right? So this is the three layer of architecture like this. OK? So now we need to understand. Think about one company. They have 200 application, 200 server like this, physical server, rack server like this kind of 200 server on their data center, right? Or maybe they are any room, any office room, right? Any they have, if they have internal data center or like if. So each one, because, because of the server, your laptop has a power connection, right? Only one power connections, but the server has minimum two power connections. So how many power connections? Okay, let's calculate it. Think about it has a two power, two power connection, two power connection, and it has a what else? Four Ethernet. Four Ethernet connection, or maybe more than that, or five. Actually, it's five. Five Ethernet. Why five? I'll explain. Minimum, minimum, right? Because it's a server. Usually, in your laptop or desktop, you have only one Ethernet port. Ethernet port means which one? Ethernet. If I can show you the server, okay, let's see. Okay. So this is called the Ethernet port. You see here, server port. And if, if I can show you here, uh, just give me one second. Backside of the server. Or what can I do? So let's let's show you one actual server. Okay, let's let's see this one. Okay, all right. See here, how many port? He's two, 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 right? One and two, these two. And also here's another one. This one is I drag. And also I can show you from here. This, this one is more clear. You see here? This is for a BGA port for monitor connection. This is the backside of the server. So you see one, two, three, four. This four internet port is Ethernet port. This Ethernet port is for Cable connections. You guys remember the cable, right? Ethernet cable, the one I showed my previous video. So Ethernet connection, you're gonna connect here. This server has a four, and also it has a, another empty space. See here, empty space. You can add more network card, NIC card. So each one NIC card can have one port, one NIC card can have two port, one NIC card can have four port, right? So one NIC card, network card can have multiple port. For example, this one is built in NIC card. So one building NIC card has four NIC card. It's, it calls on board. It calls on board NIC card, right? On board port. But in here, on board means it's already attached with the motherboard. But if you add extra, if you purchase extra network card, NIC card, and for example, you purchase four port NIC card, you, you attach it here. That means you have now another extra four port, right? It's not gonna be uh, on board is extra, right? External. You just, uh, you just, uh, no, actually, it's not external. You're going to put it inside. You're going to say external. You just buy it separately. So if you need more Ethernet port, you can add here NIC card. So it depends on what kind of NIC card you're buying, right? So NIC card can have one gig NIC card, and you can have two gig NIC card, uh, sorry, 10 gig NIC card. And 10 gig also has copper connections, and can 10 gig has a fiber connections. So copper means Ethernet, copper means Ethernet. So 
Ethernet copper connections can be one, um, one gig and 10 gig. And so most of the server is coming like this. Minimum four, minimum four Ethernet port plus another extra Ethernet port here is all the time one gig, is all the time one gig. This is for server management, which is called for, for a uh, Dell server is called iDrive. If it is a HP, then this management port, remote management port call is ILO. It is, it, if it is HP and if it is Cisco UCS, they call it IPMI, remote management. So um, Dell call it I, uh, iDrag, HP call it ILO and Cisco call it IPMI, which is for remote management to remotely manage this server. If server is powered off, you can manage, you can power on remotely and you can install operating system remotely. Everything you can do through this through this. And this four port gonna be work for your network, data network. That means whenever you have inside, say storage transaction, if you need any kind of other transaction, you need to make it happen, like virtual machine traffic, you need to send. So actually you can set data for the data, all right? So think about, so total of five Ethernet connection, right? Um, what else I can have? So just these two things, okay? So for example, this machine has two power connection. It's a one U server. One U server means it's a thin, right? This rack unit. So it has two power. Think about the application. There is a um, 200 application is running on 200 ser physical server. Just think about to accommodate 200 physical server like this kind of server, how much space you need? You need a big, huge, big room, right? Plus each and every server has two power connection you need, right? That means 400 just power cable you have. You have to connect 400 power cable. And then the other part of the power cable, you have to plug in your outlet. So do you think your data center have that like 400 power outlet? So that means you have to manage, you have to add some extra outlet. It's extra expense, right? And then five ethernet connections, each server. So five times 200, that means 1000, just ethernet cable connection, 1000. 1000 ethernet connection. So how many cables can you imagine? It's a huge, right? So you need a huge big room to accommodate all those. Not only that, each and every server will generate heat because when the server is running, it will generate heat. That means you need a, a good cooling system. You need a good cooling system. So um, that means you, if you run a cooling system, air condition, that means you need more power for air condition. You need more power for your all running all the server. That means there will be a huge amount of power consumption. So you need a big room, power consumption is high, plus huge cable management, right? So everything is too much hassle. Everything is too much hassle. So that's why, that's why virtualization come to the picture. So why? Instead of having 2000 server for 2000, uh, sorry, 200 server for 200 application, that's called a traditional system. If you can have a system like here, say for example, a server here, just give me a second. Think about a server is server here. And if you can have an operating system, and an application. Okay, so I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete this application. Okay.
So think about, you have a server number. Okay, think about this virtual. Uh, we have some uh, virtual. Um, We don't know what kind of virtualization we're going to do, but we at least we know virtualization host. So this is going to be virtualization host number one, and then virtualization host number two, virtualization host number three, and this is going to be zero two. So this is going to be zero three, and dot 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 dot. Is last one is maybe think think about because I don't have enough space to draw all. Think about this is number eight. That's just an example. Just an example. Eight, right? Just, just an example, right? Just an example. Okay. So instead of having two hundred server to run 200 server to run to run 200 application right if you have a just eight i'm just giving an example a scenario eight physical server so this is the physical server in this physical server we're going to install a virtualization software. We don't know what kind of virtualization software we're going to use. We're going to, we'll know it a couple of, after a couple of minutes. But right now, we know it's only a physical server. We have total eight highly configured physical server. And then on top of the physical hardware or server, we're going to install uh, virtualization tools. We're going to install what? Virtualization tools. Just give me one second. So, whenever you install a virtualization software on top of a physical hardware, so it's going to be virtual, like you, you'll be able to get a virtual environment, right? And then on top of that, you're going to create a, some virtual machine and then you're going to install application. So, the reason I draw this picture, if you can manage eight physical server with a virtual software, you will be able to accommodate 2000 application with one eight physical server. That means inside eight physical server, you will be able to create 200 virtual server on top of that, on top of 200 virtual server, you'll be able to install application. To an application, right? So that means you'll be able to accommodate all 200 application in here, in here, right? In here. It'll be accommodated here, right? Everything, you know, it will be able to run from this eight. So now, now just thinking, before you manage 800 physical server, just to run a physical 200 application, right? Now you're managing only eight physical server. So less hassle, less cable, less power cable, less ethernet cable, and also less space, less price. So, if, so you have a lot of flexibility and also you are saving money whenever you have a virtual environment. That's why we need virtual environment. Now a question, what kind of virtual software we should use and who gonna provide us that software, right? That's what we need to know first. So in the market, nowadays in the market, there is a, some key vendor company who provide the virtualization software. So Citrix, Citrix has their own operating system called Gen Server. VMware is a big company. VMware is the number one. So VMware, ESXi, Citrix, Gen Server, Microsoft, Hyper-V, 
Oracle Virtual Box, Proxmox Virtual uh, Environment. There's a lot other company, but out of all those, VMware is the number one who provide virtualization technology, virtualization software. So all of them are a vendor, different, different vendor. They provide the virtualization software. But I said, VMware is the number one company on most of the government company, most of the like big, big company, they use VMware. Why the government and big company use VMware? Because uh, why not the other small company? Because other small company, maybe they cannot afford that much VMware product because VMware license is expensive. So Citrix Gen Server for Citrix. So we are not going to learn Citrix. We are not going to learn Oracle. We are not going to learn Hyper-V, but we're going to learn VMware. That's why I'm going to talk the rest of the syllabus or chapter I'm going to discuss with VMware. Whenever I talk about the virtualization, directly I'm going to mention VMware. So now we understand the company name. So the way we know Microsoft, right? Microsoft provide operating system, Windows operating system, right? So VMware provide virtualization platform. So VMware has a different, different types of virtualization, not only VMware, all those company has their own different, different types of virtualization. So the virtualization is called what? Hypervisor. Whenever any company provide, whenever any company provide virtualization feature or software, or safe software, virtual software from where you can get or you can um, uh, you can get the facility of virtualization. That means you will be able to create virtual environment. That's called a hypervisor. That's called what? Hypervisor. So we're gonna we can look at here. Uh, hypervisor. Okay. So hypervisor, right? So what I said, hypervisor, right? Hypervisor, hypervisor, okay. So hypervisor means it's gonna give you a virtual platform. In a word, hypervisor means it's gonna give you a virtualized software or platform. So. Now a question, what types of hypervisor? Who provide? So you can say VMware hypervisor, you can say Microsoft Hyper-V, that's also a hypervisor. VMware ESXi is a hypervisor. Um, Citrix Gen Server is a hypervisor, right? Uh, Oracle um, KVM, Oracle has a KVM, that's also a hypervisor. And inside the hypervisor, Inside the hypervisor, there is a two types of hypervisor. How many types? Two types. Two types of hypervisor. So one called type one. I said two types of hypervisor. So first type is called type one. Second type called type two. So you can say type one and type two hypervisor. And also you can call it bare metal hypervisor. So type one, another alternative name is bare metal. So type one is a confusing word because I said two types plus I said type one. So two types and type one is confusing word. Actually, uh, the two types, one of the types name is type one, another one types name is type two. That's why it's a confusing. And that's why I all the time I try to use the alternative name. So type one's, the same another name is called bare metal hypervisor bare metal hypervisor and type 2 call is hosted hypervisor so each and everybody has their own two types of hypervisor each and everybody means what i mean vendor or manufacturer so in this case in this case who is the vendor vmware citrix uh hype microsoft hyper v um, you know, sorry, Microsoft, Microsoft, Hyper-V is there, hypervisor, Microsoft and uh, Oracle. So they are the vendor. And if I talk about the 
VMware. If I talk about the VMware, so VMware has VMware has type one hypervisor called ESX side. So VMware hypervisor name is what? ESX side, right? ESX side. And Microsoft. Microsoft hypervisor name is Hyper very model Hyper V. They call it Hyper V. They call it Hyper V. Okay. So now um, Citrix. Citrix Gen Server. Gen Server. Citrix Gen Server. Okay. So <clears throat> those are the bare metal hypervisor or type one hypervisor. Now type two hypervisor. Let me put it on top. Okay. Now type two hypervisor or hosted hypervisor. What is the hosted hypervisor? Uh, so VMware has a hosted hypervisor. VMware is called it. Um, Workstation, VMware Workstation. It's called it VMware Workstation. So VMware company has a type two or hosted hypervisor and that hypervisor name is VMware Workstation. And also VMware has another product for Mac. So if you have a Windows laptop, desktop or Windows server, inside that you can, you can, you can install VMware Workstation, but if you have a Mac laptop, what are you going to do? So it's called VMware Fusion. Fusion or something, Fusion. Uh, just let's just check it out. VMware Fusion for Mac. You see here, VMware Fusion. Okay, uh, if you go here, run Windows and more uh, Mac Fusion. Okay, download VMware Fusion. So you can just go there, uh, download, and you can see here VMware Fusion for more. Okay, you can download it from there based on your uh, what kind of Mac OS you have, depending on that. So that means what? So VMware has this, and also there is another, I believe all of you guys maybe know, um, Oracle. Oracle has uh, Oracle Virtual Box. Okay, so this is the type, bare metal hypervisor and hosted hypervisor. So VMware has both products. So VMware bare metal hypervisor name is ESXi. VMware um, hosted hypervisor name is, or type two hypervisor name is VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion, VMware Fusion for Mac. All right, so now we need to understand actually what is the difference between these two. So these two means, these two means, if you want to install this one, VMware Workstation, why is call is hosted? The reason is hosted, this keyword has a lot meaning. Why is meaning, a lot, a lot meaning here? Because VMware Workstation means you have to install it. If you have, so for example, you have a laptop or desktop or server, right? And um, and then your physical hardware, physical hardware means your laptop is a physical, right? So you definitely you have an operating system, maybe Windows 10 or Windows 11, right? On your laptop or maybe on your desktop. So or you have already an operating system, Windows 10 or 11. On top of that, you will be able to install VMware Workstation. That means why are you installing Workstation? When you, you are logging to your operating system first, right? You already have a Windows 10 or 11. On top of that, you are installing Workstation. When you install the workstation, on top of that, 
inside the workstation, you will be able to create some virtual machine. What you will be able to create? Some virtual machine, which is called VM, which is called VM, virtual machine. So virtual machine means it's, an, it's a virtual hardware. Virtual machine means virtual hardware. It's not physical, but it's same like as a physical, but it's gonna, it's gonna use the resource from your physical. So virtual machine, so on, if you have a virtual machine inside your workstation, then you'll be able to create, install some operating system on top of that, on the virtual machine, right? So it can be any kind of operating system, Windows 10, 11, server or Linux, Unix, whatever you want, right? So in your desktop or laptop, you can have multiple, you can have multiple what? You can have multiple VM. So for example, here you have multiple VM, you have a workstation, on inside the workstation, sorry, my goodness. So inside the workstation, you have a multiple VM here. Just think about like this. So that means VMR workstation will give you opportunity to create multiple virtual machines. But this is a hoster. That means. VMware workstation itself is sitting on another operating system. And then inside the VMware workstation, it's giving you opportunity to create a virtual machine means another, another operating system. So operating system, and then inside you have another operating system, another multiple operating system. That's why it's called hosted because all other virtual is hosting by the, your main, your main operating system. That's why it's hosted. But bare metal means, there is no operating system physical in the physical machine directly when you install ESXi. ESXi is a operating system. What is a operating system? It's a VMware operating system, OS. So when you install VMware operating system directly on the physical server, on the physical server, for example, here, you install VMware ESXi. What do you install? VMware. ESXi, right? So when you install VMware ESXi directly here, that means physical layer and then VMware ESXi is the operating system software. That means you have a virtual system. So whenever VMware ESXi, VMware ESXi installed directly on a physical hardware, that's called a bare metal. Not only that, any other Citrix Gen Server, if you install Gen Server software directly on a physical hardware, it's gonna be a bare metal system, bare metal virtual system, right? which is type one. So there is a big difference between type one and type two, but we don't understand yet. So I'll give you some example, then you're gonna understand why actually you're gonna use bare metal. Okay, now I'm going to give you some example why you need a bare metal system. Okay. Actually, let me take this one. Yeah. So you have a desktop and inside your desktop, okay. Let me make it a little bit smaller, just so I can maybe accommodate it nicely. Think about. Okay, let's let's say BM. Let's say BM here. Okay. So this is say for example. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. So five BM you created. So let's say, let's say, this one has a uh, 
um, eight CPU. You can say PCPU. P means physical, right? PCPU. This this machine, your desktop machine, your desktop machine is eight CPU. Eight, eight CPU means eight PCPU. And then you have say, for example, 16 GB of memory. Memory means RAM, right? Okay. This is the configuration you have on your this desktop computer, right? So you install window. What do you install here on your desktop? So you install a operating system called you install a workstation. Workstation. Say this is a little bit big like this, okay? This is the system you have, right? Okay, this is your desktop computer, right? Your desktop computer, right? System. So. You install workstation. Okay. So you need desktop. What do you install? You install workstation, right? So when you install a workstation, VMware workstation, you install here, right? So you have operating system. This is a physical, this is a physical machine, and this is the monitor. So since think about this is desktop computer completely. And in this hardware, you install operating system, maybe Windows 10 or Windows 11, or maybe Windows Server operating system, whatever. And top of that, install workstation. So that means now inside the workstation, you'll be able to create what? You'll be able to create a virtual machine, right? To create virtual machine. That means inside this, you'll be able to create a virtual machine. Think about you created a one, two, three, four, five, five virtual machine. What is the configuration of the five virtual machine? Each and every one has a think about. Okay, let's, let's do like this. A CPU and, okay. So this one you assign how much CPU? Two CPU, two. And this one you did how much? Say four, you get you a deep of memory, right? Inside the virtual machine, inside the virtual machine, inside the virtual machine, and inside the virtual machine. So when you configure a virtual machine, virtual machine is a, Virtual machine is a hardware. Virtual machine is hardware. On top of that, you can install an operating system. So on the hardware, when you configure the hardware, you said, okay, you assign two CPU. Actually, it's not the CPU, it's, it's gonna be the CPU virtual because it's gonna be virtual, okay? Anyway, I'm going to delay this. Okay, so this and this, of this, 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 and this. Okay, all right. So, now, how many CPU you assign? One, two, three, four, five, that means 10. And how much you have? Eight. Do you think you can do that? Mm -hmm. We cannot. And also, how much memory you assign? Four, 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 right? And you have five machine, five virtual machine you created. The so four times four times four times four times four, that means it's 20. So you assign 20 gig of memory and 10 CPU, total 10 CPU and 20 gig memory you assign for your virtual machine. But in your physical machine, you have only eight CPU and 16. So CPU wise, you, how much you over configured? Two more CPU you over configured and also, Memory wise, four GB of memory you over configure, right? But one thing remember, virtual machine gonna be, take, you are assigned two CPU, that means how the virtual machine getting the CPU is gonna share the resource. That means from the physical, that means whatever the physical you have, it's gonna take from there, right? Whatever you physically have, you're gonna take from there, right? Whatever you have physically here, it's gonna take from there, right? So how they're gonna run? Because you 
or already over configured. And also, if your physical, if your physical host will provide the support to your virtual, the physical needs to be run. Physi the physical machine needs to be alive. But if the physical machine needs to be alive, that means physical machine itself, it needs to use some CPU and memory for, for, for your machine or your host. Itself, it needs some memory. Itself, it needs some CPU. So how he going to give you, then how he going to run? If he cannot run, that means all beams cannot going to be run. But that is what? You cannot do like this. Let's just move this to here. Now think about it. this is the configuration. Two, 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 six CPU, right? Two, six CPU you assign, you have eight. That means from the physical is supplying six CPU and still it has two and it can su survive. The host can survive with two. And also memory wise, four, four, four is already distributed to the virtual. That is called a guest, guest VM. So it distributed to the guest VM for 444, that means 12. So it it has four left. That means the host machine can survive with four because it itself it needs some memory, right? So that should be the right configuration for workstation. Workstation. That should be a right configuration for workstation, right? So the another thing is, another problem with the workstation is whenever you assign two CPU for this machine, right? For example, you have a car with seven seater, right? Or five seater, right? So you are going somewhere alone. So that means you are in the driving seat. You are not occupying your all seat. You are not utilizing your all seats, right? That means what? You have a car with five seat. You have a car with seven seat but you are not utilizing it. The same thing, when you have assigned two CPU and four GB of memory or four CPU or eight GB of memory, it not mean that if you run this machine, it's gonna consume the whole thing. It's not mean that. But what's the problem now? The problem is whenever you create a virtual machine and assign something, that's the main problem for workstation. If you, for example, machine number one, you assign two CPU. And when you run this machine, maybe it's not utilizing two, maybe, maybe it's utilizing right now, what? Maybe it's utilizing right now, 0.5, not even one CPU, 0.5 CPU, 0.5. I'm just giving an example. But still, it's gonna block two from there. It's gonna say the, the machine, Gonna request to a uh, host say, hey, the administrator assigned for me two CPU and four memory. Give my two CPU and four memory. And machine said, hey, you don't need, you are using only 0.5. Why are you just gonna block all things? And this VM gonna say, yes, it's my property. I already, I already, it's already assigned to me, so it's my property. I don't wanna release it. If I use it, if I don't use it, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep it. So same thing happened with all other. If they use all, they, if they utilize all or not utilize all, still is gonna keep it. So that means whatever the physical resource is gonna deduct from there, whatever you are saying. If it is not using, doesn't matter. It's gonna, if it is not utilizing, the whole four, two CPU or whole four memory still is gonna keep. It's not gonna release. It's gonna take from the physical. There's a problem for uh, hosted hypervisor or workstation. Now we're gonna see actually what happened with bare metal hypervisor. So now I will give you the bare metal hypervisor example. Then it will be more clear. Okay. Now we're gonna look at Say for example, this is not, this is a server. And you store here, BMR ESXi. So if, and same thing. With this configuration, now think about this is your 
server with a CPU. Actually, server will have more CPU, more memory, but I'm just giving an example just for understanding. Say your server has eight CPU and 16 GB of memory. Then, and, and also you have it on the physical server directly install ESX. There's this called a bare metal or type one hypervisor, right? So what is the difference between type one and type two? So this is the type two and this is the type one, right? Bare metal. So bare metal hypervisor, you can configure or you can allocate more memory and more CPU than what you have actually. That means you can you'll be able to do over configure, right? Okay, so let's say move this to from here to here. Okay. So now what happened? In here, we are not able to, or we are not allowed to configure 5 BM because I don't have that much resource. It's directly deduct. Whatever you are saying is deduct from the physical. But in here, you did over configure. You can have more. You can have more. Say, for example, you have another one like this. So, how much you did? Say, for example, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? 14 CPU. How much you assign? 14. How much you have? Eight. So you already did a over configurations, which is six more CPU assigned for your virtual machine. But you, actually you have eight. And how your physical machine is going to survive, then how it's going to provide to the uh, uh, support to the guest. But in this case, it's going to be work. Why? Because that's why that is, is the beauty of bare metal hypervisor. So whenever you configure like this, that means, and also you have how many uh, memory? One, two, three, four, seven, right? Seven times four, 28. So you assign 28 GV of memory, but actually you have 16, that means, 12 extra you already provided to your guest. Do you think all guests can be run? I believe yes. Why and how? Because maybe all of them is not utilizing two at a time. Maybe this one is utilizing maybe now one gig, one GB, right? Maybe, I'm just saying maybe. This one is maybe GV, half, right? Not full. 0 0.5 means less than or like a half of gig, right? GV. And then this one maybe doing 0 0.5, which is GV. Same thing. See, see think about all, all those are. I'm thinking about your car. All the time you are not actually uh, like full of passenger, right? So maximum time maybe you drive alone and all other seats are empty. But you have seven car seat, seven seats, that's true. So you have two CPU, that's true. You have four CPU, that's true. But on the driving seat only you, you are alone. That means when your operating system is running, it's not utilizing your all four gig of memory, or maybe all two CPU, right? So think about if this is the scenario, that means you are utilizing whatever you have the physical, right? So if you think, okay, this, this is gonna be more increasing more too, and you can maybe increase it to from two to maybe four, it's fine because other has less. And then whenever they have a less, they don't gonna do the same kind of attitude. In here, they said, oh, it's mine. Property. I, I want to share. I don't want to share with anybody. But in here, in a bare metal system, they said, okay, they are very nice. So they're going to say, okay, uh, yeah, mm, I have two CPU, but out of two CPU, I am using only point, point zero 0.05, uh, sorry, point zero point 0.5. So that and rest, I have 1.5 left. So if you need it, you can use it. But whenever I need it, you have to return back to me. 
And he said, yes, if one you need it, I can give it to you. So maybe this machine or this application in here, whatever the application is running, that's is consuming too much of a CPU right now. Maybe after one hour, maybe it's going to be less, or maybe after eight hours, it's going to be less, then it's going to release to the return to the machine or the other machine, right? It, it's going to take from here and now it's going to return it, right? Same thing, all of them are going to give it to him, all going to, all going to give it to him, all going to give it to him. So easy way, each and every VM can share each other whenever they need it. So I'm just giving you an example with one machine. So you can have multiple ESXi server. That's called ESXi host actually, ESXi host. That's called ESXi host. You can have multiple ESXi hosts like this. You can have multiple ESXi hosts like this. You can have multiple ESXi hosts like this, right? So for example, you have 10 VMs, 10 VMs here, right? So this is the, now at least you understand bare metal system is better than your hosted hypervisor, right? Bare metal hypervisor is better than hosted. This is the hosted, hosted has a limitation, you already understand, but bare metal doesn't have this, that's a limitation, right? So that means definitely bare metal is better, right? So, we just understand one advantage. Now we're gonna look for another advantage. So bare metal has a lot more advantage. That means whenever you have ESXi host or multiple ESXi host, think about you have one, two, three, four, five. So this one has 10 VMs and maybe you have another one has maybe uh, five VMs. Maybe this one has 10 VMs. And maybe it's on a five. And maybe this one has five. So how many BMs do you have? 10, 10, 20, and 15. So 20 and 15, 35. So totally how many, uh, how many BMs do you have? Total how many BMs? If I can write it down here. Okay. Total, just think, total you have 35. BM side. So VMR has a feature, SXI. Whenever you have SXI, you will be able to create a you will be able to create a cluster system. So all three you can join it. All three you can join it. All three you can join it. Let's have another one. I'm just copying here. Okay. Oh. So, Okay. This is all of your BMs, right? BM. BM and BM, right? It's okay. So, VMware has another options like whenever you have a bare metal system and if you can create a cluster. So for some reason, think about in your physical system, there's another problem with the physical. So one of the application server, for example, this application server, if power supply is, goes bad or memory goes bad or CPU goes bad or any kind of network um, interruption happen, network need cut bad, that means your physical server will be down. And if physical server is down, that means your application is down. And how soon, how soon you can uh, make it up? How soon you can resolve the problem? Think about in this server, Walmart application is running, Walmart register system application is running. So do you think Walmart can afford 30 minutes downtime? One hour downtime, one day downtime, two days downtime, never ever, right? 
they should have some, they already have actually, redundancy system, disaster recovery system, redundancy system. That means if one goes bad or shut down, immediately another one will be up. So that means somewhere, some place, they have a system. So I'm just giving an example with the traditional system. If Walmart application is running on this physical machine and this physical machine goes down, what's gonna be happen? Say for example, power supply bad. So you have to order a power supply and then whenever, it's not gonna come right away. So you have to send a purchase request to the vendor, then vendor will send it to you within one or two days. And when you received it, you have to go to the data center, you have to change it. Uh, you have to replace the bad one, put the, uh, the uh, new one. So after your replacement is done, then you can you'll be able to power it on. So that means it's gonna take at least two to three days. And, and that two to three days downtime, nobody can afford it in real field and in the real like enterprise level environment. Nobody can afford it. But in virtual environment, in virtual environment, say for example, you have 10 BMs here and you have a clustering system. So say for example, out of 10 BMs, one of the BMs, BMs means a virtual server, right? So one of the virtual server has a Walmart application, but this physical machine went down. If this one went down, say this one is down. This one is down. If this one is, if if this one went down, what's going to be happen? If this one went down, what's going to be happen? Just think about. If this is down, what's going to be happen? What's going to be happen? Immediately, there's these ten BMs going to be moved to here, 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 here somewhere. So it's not mean that all ten is going to be moved here. It's not mean that all ten going to be moved here. So there is a system. There is a system. So there is a system that's called DRS. So when you have a cluster system, VMware cluster system, cluster maintain three things, DRS, um, HA, and Bmotion. So HA's job is to look which host is, which host has a problem. So whenever it goes down, immediately HA will be recognized it, oh, one host is down, then HA will inform DRS, so let, let me let me type, then you guys can understand better, okay. So I said cluster, right? Cluster, so cluster will have what? Three things, uh, HA, DRS, and I said Bmotion, right? Okay. So one, Whenever you have a multiple host like this, you can you will be able to create a cluster. That's a feature of VMware. So whenever you have a cluster, that means you have HA, DRS, and VMware configure. So HS job is to look uh, monitor all uh, servers in a cluster. So whenever it's found any host is goes bad or down, is immediately is going to inform HA going to be informed DRS. Hey DRS, do you know there is a server is down? And DRS is going to come and look here. And they're gonna found okay. There is a ten virtual machine, and we need to move it immediately. So how how DS gonna move? DS cannot move it. DS gonna make a plan. Okay, how are I gonna distribute? Because I have another five seven, or five or seven. Say for example, another four uh, host is alive. So I need to distribute it. So based on their ability, based on their available resource, DS will distribute. Okay, maybe. Uh, 3 BM here, maybe 1 BM here, 3 BM here, 3 BM here, like this. So who gonna distribute DRS based on the available resource? It's the DRS job. That's why it's called distributed resource scheduler. And then whenever DRS is decided, okay, I'm gonna move, uh, we, we should move 1 BM, 3 BM here, 1 BM here, and 3 BM here, 3 BM here. Based on that, DRS is gonna be informed B motion. Hey, B motion. I have a plan because there is a host down. Can you move the machine? Then Bmotion gonna say, okay, let me move. So Bmotion will move them. That means what? All those machines gonna be moved here. Or move somewhere here, 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 somewhere, right? So you don't need to be you don't need to be audit. It's gonna be moved automatically based on your cluster system. So that's another advantage, another facility, right? Which you cannot get it. So immediately your application gonna be. <clears throat> available on other host. 
and you will have time. Physical host, if it is powered, uh, if it is a power supply issues or memory issues, you can just order it whenever it comes two days, three days, four days, it doesn't matter because your application is running. There's no interruption. So that's the advantage. Okay. <clears throat> So this is how the bare metal system works. And I believe you understand why you need the bare metal system. There's a lot other configuration. Okay, so in here, I want to show you another thing. In respect of creating this cluster, you should have a share storage. It's a requirement. It's, it's a requirement from VMware. So for example, it's, hard, it's actually storage. 50 terabyte of storage. So enterprise level company, they have a separate storage device and with huge volume, 50 terabyte, 100 terabyte, 500 terabyte, it doesn't matter because, but it's gonna, it's gonna be expensive anyway. Think about you have 500 terabyte of storage. So whenever you create a BMs, all BM storage, all BM storage, You cannot create a BM. You cannot create a BM storage. All storage should be here. I'll, 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 I'll explain what does it mean. Okay, think about this is your storage is different. In the same data center, but different rack or somewhere, right? So all the machines inside this, each and every SXI host, because it's a physical host, right? The blue one is a physical, right? So each and every physical host has internal, internal what? Internal storage. Say for example, your laptop, your laptop has a C drive, right? Maybe 200 gigabyte, maybe um, 128 gigabyte, whatever, right? So that means you see your local storage. Whenever you see I my C drive in your laptop, my C drive, think about here. If I go my C drive, say go to my C drive, okay, this PC, you see here, I have two drive. So that is what, this is my local storage. This is my local storage. <clears throat> this is my local storage. So now, this is the VMware requirement to have to utilize VMware feature 100%. So you have to have a shared storage. So when you create a virtual machine inside this host, the machine profile gonna be sitting on this host. Say for example, this 10 machine, right? So this, this time machine, definitely each and every machine, you have to assign some storage, 100 gigabyte, 200 gigabyte, whatever, based on your requirement. And also each and every VM, VM means virtual machine or guest machine, you can say, will have multiple drive. It depends on your requirement if you need it. So why are you gonna get that storage? So you can get that storage, you can assign that storage for, for these 10 VMs Definitely, you have to assign some storage because each and every machine sh will have C drive, right? One, at least one drive. So each and every drive you have to assign the storage. So how are you gonna send storage? You can send the storage from locally from here. But if you send locally storage here, and if this machine goes down, the machine you cannot move the machine here. You cannot move the machine here because it's using local storage. That's why cluster system. That one has a one mandatory requirement, which is you have to have a share storage. So whenever you build a machine, machine properties will be sitting on here, but machines, everything, storage means everything, right? We can store the data, right? So the machine storage, time machine storage is gonna be stay here. Same thing, these five VMs is sitting on this host, but that means five virtual machine servers, Profile is sitting here, but machine storage is sitting in the same location. That means this one, this, this one is sitting here, this one is sitting here, this one store sitting here, this five BMs store sitting here, this five BMs sitting store sitting here. So whenever you move those machine together, for example, I'm going to move this machine. So if I move it here, you see here, like I can move the machine here, but the storage, storage is gonna be stay in the same place on here, local, on the share storage. So there's the concept, main concept. So VMware 
um, has a lot of features, a lot of flexibility whenever you have the, those kind of configuration. Any kind of incident happen, if any server is down, you don't need to be audit. Automatically it's gonna be moved without any interruption. So that's the beauty of bare metal hypervisor. That's the beauty of a BMR hyper, BMR ESXA or BMR hypervisor. So uh, we're gonna learn in depth how we're gonna set it up when we do the practical um, session. But now in this session, that's enough to understand. And I believe all of you guys understand it. And I, I believe I explained everything based on my document. Yeah, traditional system. I already explained everything. Storage system. So Dell has their own. Uh, Dell has a storage system. Dell has a server. Also, Dell has a storage system. HP, HP has a server. And HP has a HP has a storage, which is HP three pair storage server system. Storage system. And also, there is another company, third party company, which is called NetApp, NetApp Storage. All right, that's all actually. Uh, that's enough. I think that's enough for understanding. Um, and I believe you guys already understand what is the difference between hyper, type one and type two hypervisor, what's the benefit, what's the advantage and disadvantage of each, other, each one. So as I explained, you, I believe you understand bare metal hypervisor, most of the company, not only most of the, 100%, 100% enterprise level company, they use bare metal hypervisor. And, but I cannot say 100% BMR because maximum use BMR. You can say 90 to 95% use BMR. So that's all. That's all. And if you like this video, please share with your friends and family or your coworker. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And thank you. Thanks for watching. And it's gonna it's on my second video. Uh, and look uh, like look for my another video because I'm gonna release uh in a series. So hopefully within short time, I'm gonna release another one active directory video. And then we'll go for two networking video. Thank you. Thanks for watching.